So in a previous video, I went over how I set up my Raspberry Pi Zero and also did some stress testing by trying to load up a Minecraft server on it. Now, that video was not really meant to be a how to set up a Minecraft server on it, nor did I really expect it to work. However, you guys really seem to like it. So for this video, I'm going to kind of take that concept and try a little harder to get a server to run on a Raspberry Pi Zero. Now note, a Raspberry Pi Zero is not gonna be powerful enough to, for you to really get a real enjoyable experience on a Minecraft server, kind of no matter what I do. But that being said, is it even possible to get a server to start up and even join it? On my last video, I actually got some suggestions from people on what I could do in order to maybe get the server to run and launch. The first thing I did was actually to use Spigot. Spigot is a bit more optimized than the standard Minecraft server that I believe, and I actually got some improvements by just running a standalone Spigot on the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now, it didn't actually run still, it was still very slow, but it seemed to at least boot up a little bit quicker than the standard Minecraft server jar. The second thing I attempted to do was to use improved Java arguments. So when you run the Java application, which is the server, you can provide Java some arguments on what to do better and kind of how to optimize the server experience. Unfortunately, I ran into some issues. The biggest improvement you can really make is to use an improved Java garbage collector, or G1GC. Unfortunately, as far as I can find, and it wasn't a ton of research, you can't actually get G1GC to run on Raspberry Pi Zero. The reason being is that there is no Java version that includes G1GC enabled that'll run on an ARM v6 core, which is on the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. ARM v7, which is on the other Raspberry Pis, I think three and above, uh, those do support G1GC and versions of Java that do support it. However, the Java 8 version that you can get on the Raspberry Pi Zero does not include G1GC and no other Java versions can be installed. So because of that, I basically gave up on trying to get any sort of standard Minecraft server to run in this Raspberry Pi. But there does actually exist projects that attempt to make a Minecraft server that aren't written in Java. And for this, I attempted to use Kubrlite, which is a Minecraft server that is actually written in C++. Now this is not official, this is no way actually related to the game, these are just people who have decided to attempt to make a server that was in C++. Now I won't get into too much detail on how this works, but because Minecraft uses packets to send data from the client to the server, all you have to do is actually just to make the server support those packets and actually kind of set the world up to where you can feed the data to the clients for them to play the game. That's a very, very simplified version and a very big TLDR that does not encompass everything, but in the end, you actually can do this. So with that being said, let's actually try and get Kubernetes set up and just see what happens. So currently in the background there, you can actually see me loading up Kubernetes, and it's actually generating the world at this point. The lines that are currently being generated and the console there are actually saying it's generating a world. Now again, our CPU is actually still being fully used. However, this time the RAM is only about half used. And that's actually a really good improvement over what was previously 100% CPU and 100% RAM. So now if you skip forward a little bit to where the server finishes loading and actually try and join the world, you will see I actually do get into the world. That being said, it's a world, it just chugs very hard to load chunks, which again is to be very much expected. Loading chunks are going to be very intensive on this uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, not only because the CPU isn't that great, but also because it runs on a micro SD, so loading and saving chunks to that disk are gonna be a bit slow. But okay, so we got into the world and we actually were able to join and move around to generate chunks and do all that stuff. So let's give us a little bit more fair fight and let's tweak some settings. In the end, really the only thing I tweaked was I actually just made the render distance on the server much smaller. I think I changed it from 10 chunks to four. And now when I join the server, you will see it is immensely better. In fact, we're only using about 33 to 50% CPU usage while moving around, while generating chunks, which is actually kind of incredible to me. And if you notice, the server really doesn't look anything different than what you would normally experience on a regular Java server. There is train generation, all the items are there, entities move around, you move around, you can break blocks. Every core mechanic, I would say, is included in the game. and first impressions and first visuals, you wouldn't really tell that you weren't on a regular Minecraft server. First impressions, however, aren't that great for actually telling and actually kind of determining how good this server is. Um, so the rest of this video is going to be basically about me testing things out, kind of 
letting you know what the server is really like and what the, uh, you can kind of expect by doing this. So first things first, very basic mechanics are there. There is monster AI or mob AI. You can move around, you can kill animals, you can break blocks, you can kind of interact with the world. I would say that's the most core mechanics to Minecraft is being able to interact with the world. Secondly, from a more server perspective, there are some commands like slash spawn works there. However, it is lacking a lot of other commands. There is no place block command. Um, there is no, uh, there is time set day, which you'll see there. And actually that's pretty cool because it does a little animation with the uh, sun and time. It kind of, uh, it moves it fluidly. It doesn't uh, hard set it like the normal server does, which is a big plus for me. But um, it is missing a lot of other commands though that kind of make things hard and uh, kind of take away from the server experience. But honestly though, if you are just looking for an experience for you and to try something cool and to play around with something interesting and you want to list on your Raspberry Pi Zero, I'd say go for it. This is definitely working, it's definitely viable. It's not perfect, but it's viable. So the rest of this video is just gonna be me and actually MJR here who joins me. We're just gonna be kind of playing around the server, seeing what works, what doesn't, mainly seeing what doesn't work. And uh, the rest of this video is gonna be kind of me logging uh, these interesting things we find. So uh, I'll, let, I'll let the rest of the video play and I'll keep uh, narrating it. But um, in terms of getting a server to run on this uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, it's we, I'm showing you right here, it works. You can actually run a Minecraft server on a Raspberry Pi, not with a native server, but with a modified one, run a different language, and it supports multiplayer, and it runs decently well. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're gonna stick around for the rest of the video, I appreciate it, but if you're not, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all later. Peace out. So one of the first things we noticed right away was that there was no particle effects that came out of the blocks when you broke them via a multiplayer. So when I did it, which as you can see there, I got a particle effect from the block when it broke. However, when MJR here did it, every time there was no particle from the block. So obviously just a missing packet there, but at any rate, just one thing we did notice that wasn't there. Another thing that's very similar to this is that the skeletons didn't have an attack animation. They still shot arrows and attacked you, but they were missing that draw, the bow drawing and the kind of whole attack animation there. Well, generation wise, we noticed that the bedrock level was just flat, unlike the vanilla, which is kind of staggered at the bottom. This one is kind of like the uh, flat world, which is a flat sheet of bedrock. Minecarts do not follow the tracks through turns very well. And the end is very underwhelming, but there is another dragon, so at least it's got that going for it. I also ended up doing some kind of stress tests on the server by spawning a lot of uh, entities, and as you can see, the server quickly fights against this. Um, this is a decent amount of entities, but the fact still stands that it goes from 0 to 100 really quickly. Even simple little redstone clocks that are designed to cause a little bit of lag really hit the server. And continuing with the lag, the nether was another huge point of lag. The server while in the nether was basically at 100% of the CPU. I'm going to attribute a lot of this due to the lava having to update and lava flow, but at either rate, the nether was just not really an option. Another thing I want to note that's not really an issue that I just kind of found weird was because I'm a modder and I was using a modded client with some of my mods on it, I was interested to see how the server handled modded blocks because these mods are or these blocks are not vanilla of the game. They don't really exist. And for MJR at least, he doesn't have the mod. So what does he see? Because he can't see that block because the texture is only the texture block are only on my client. And it turns out it's weird. I see it locally. The block is there. The physics are there for me locally. However, for MJR, they just don't exist. He sees me kind of floating in the air. He doesn't collide with a block. He can't interact with it. He can't see it. Just nothing. So, again, really weird that the server kind of doesn't just outright deny the block being there. It doesn't outright kind of stop me from placing it, but just something I found kind of interesting and funny. Again, not really an issue, but it is just kind of a weird interaction. There's some final things we want to note that we found were that the fire doesn't really grab to the walls well, it just kind of places like a normal fire on top block, it doesn't do like those uh, side wall states that the fire really should. 
we found out a lot more of the AIs just kind of don't work too well. The gas doesn't really understand how to fly and blazes don't really hover, although this kind of interaction is kind of in vanilla, but uh, it doesn't really hover, it just kind of falls in this case. The slimes also don't really bounce around, they kind of just scoot in this case, which kind of just looks weird, just gliding around. Very weird. I also had this weird issue with the weather just randomly disappearing like that. I don't know if that was a bug or an AI issue or a lag issue, but it was still weird and funny nonetheless. Also while on the topic of mobs, they didn't seem to add them all as when I went to kind of grab some of the spawn eggs, it just gave me the spider spawn egg instead of the one I wanted. So I don't know if they didn't fully implement all the mobs and AIs or just what, but there's that. So in the end, yes, I am being very nitpicky with some of these issues, but these are things you will notice nonetheless if you're actually playing the game on the server for a decent amount of time. Now, my recommendation would be to just not do this. I mean, yes, it's there, it's possible, it's pretty cool to do, but if you and your friends are looking for a cheap option to run a Minecraft server for you and your friends with the full experience, just get the $35 Raspberry Pis. This, It's not that much more, and you'll get a much, much better experience out of it by doing that. So anyways, that's just my thoughts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this kind of interesting setup and uh, all things it has to offer. But at any rate, that is it. I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.